Let's say hi to Danny Bonaducci. Danny. Danny, what's oh, up, man? man? How are hey. you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? Great. Although, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm the tiniest bit surprised. Why is that? Well, because you guys are like, you know, legends in my business. I'm a yeah, morning jock, as you know. And you guys are like probably a, one of the biggest names in radio. And I'm listening, and I'm hearing about how dangerous the dashboard of a car is. <laughs> yeah. let, me, let me jump in with my life. So one day, I'm sleeping with Johnny Thunder's wife. My girlfriend comes home and shoots me in the chest. Now, that's the night out. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We, we live the pussy lifestyle, man. Compared to what the hell you've been doing, we are just faggots. He lives a behind-the-music episode every day. Every, every day. day. Every day. And I'm sitting here, the dashboards were yeah. very dangerous. I was almost injured once in a, a sh short stop. <laughs> what an ass. And I swear to God, if, if it wasn't for me and maybe Susan Day being a puker, they'd have had nothing. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one, the Partridge family behind the music. Yeah, they tried to make Susan Day seem like uh, she really had bulimia bad, I guess. Yeah, but before they named it, like she's the, the poster child of this stuff, because she's way back when it was called Throwing Up. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that was kind of back when that was the look anyway. Exactly. Everyone right. loved a nice skinny broad back then. Everyone was trying to look like Karen Carpenter back then. Yeah, Karen Carpenter, that was a little too far. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> Danny, uh, we're loving the show. I, I I don't know what to think of it, though, man. You're crazy. Yeah, that seems to be the uh, going concern these days. My, o my only concern with that, because, I mean, I can't say they edited me crazy. What I just, that, that's the way I am. That's how I behave. There's no way out. What I can say is I was really, really, really crazy on Monday, and then really, really crazy on Friday, and when they're done editing, I'm crazy all day. <laughs> the entire week. <laughs> <laughs> that's reality yeah. television for you. <laughs> yeah, you probably had a couple of nice, normal days in there, right? I did nice days with the kids. I like my pets. I was going to say I mowed the lawn, but I didn't mow the lawn. Were you ever in the middle of losing your shit and you're just thinking, okay, this is making the show? Yes, to be honest. Uh, to be honest with you, I was... But that was kind of the problem where I started to think of this is really crazy, that there might be something seriously wrong with me. Because yeah. I'd be going so far and in my head, I'm thinking, wow, this is probably going to be really interesting, but then it would go so far in my head, I would think, hey, you have to <laughs> and, and I couldn't. People are going to be watching this, for God's sake. You know what? I'm kind of bummed because uh, we have you on live, so obviously you're okay by the end of this, the, the show. Well, I, I was I watching do. every week convinced that, you know, we were going to get the headline. You know what, man? I swear to God, so was I. I, I talk so well. I, I, I don't know if they'll air this or not. Yeah. Uh, because we had some legal issues, right? Not not everything went according to plan. And, you know, I was chock full of Vicodin and vodka and steroids. Not a great mix. You know, especially if I got a questionable anger management problem to begin with. So there's some people that might be suing. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a game I invented when I was homeless, and it's called Shoot, Bitch. And what you do is you find the guy with the gun who thinks he's really bad, and you piss him off, and he draws his gun, and you look at him and you go, Shoot, Bitch! And then they never do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's a little suicidal. I, no, that's not, because I no? really truly believe they won't do it. It, it, it would be suicidal if I thought, man, if I say this, this guy is going to shoot me. But, you know, the public places and stuff, uh, they're never going to shoot. Wow. Yeah. What, now, what? It, obviously, it was the drugs that uh, got you homeless. You are spending money on drugs instead of uh, the roof over the head. You mean, you mean back when I was homeless when I was, like, 19? Yeah. No, everybody thinks I was, like, this big crack whore, and that came later. Um, <laughs> the Partridge, uh, Partridge family, the last year, the big money, yeah. $600 a week. 600 bucks a week. Yeah, it was wasn't really bad money for 1970, 5 or whatever it was. No. But when I turned 18 to get all this money, it was 72 grand. And I made a conscious decision. I said to myself, well, I can either try and eke this out into some kind of lifestyle for a little while, or I can have the most outrageous 30 days ever. God damn. Oh, we're talking man. to another rock star. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> we, we bitch about how our rock stars are gone, man, but you, this is your rock star. Well, yeah, thank you, man. I, I mean, I'm 46 years old, so I feel like 
you know, Janis Joplin is one of my heroes, yeah. right? Dead at 27. Now, Britney Spears is going to live forever. <laughs> That's just so inappropriate. What happened to rock stars dying, choking on their own vomit like they're supposed to? Hallelujah, brother. We were just talking about, uh, we were at Ozfest a couple years back, and all these tough-looking bands were eating, like, vegetarian meals and drinking water and, oh, and wow. whining and complaining and they're, as they're all tatted up. And I was looking like, man, I've been backstage for many, many years. I'm like, what happened to the rock stars? Where's the waking up with the needle in your arm, clinically dead? Right. <laughs> all that anyway, shit. I want you to know, that's the line to beat on Behind the Music. Yeah. Nikki Six saying, and that's when I woke up with the needle still in my arm. Yeah, with the blood. <laughs> the line to beat, man. Yeah, and people are not really trying to beat that right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Although Danny's coming close. Danny's going to give it a try. He's going to give doing, it a shot. So that's really you doing steroids on the show? Yeah. First, uh, first episode, I didn't know what, I'll tell you guys the absolute truth. Here's what happened. We sold VH1 one show, a very cute little show called Rock and Roll Dinner Party, and I got the idea because it said Mick Jagger drove up to a nightclub, and I thought, who the hell taught Mick Jagger to drive? I never thought about Mick Jagger behind the wheel of a car. Have you? Right. He goes in limousines and Rolls Royces. I wonder what else he does. I wonder if I had him over to my house, would he play Pictionary? You know, what do these rock stars do? So we, we sold them this cute little show, and then that kind of, they didn't like that so much, but they thought the Bonaduce's were interesting. So my wife started setting up these cute little things for her to do, like her 39th and a half birthday party because she was never going to turn 40, stuff like that, right? Yeah. And I said, just send the cameras to my house, and I'll be fascinating, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so they send the cameras to my house. And I'm just sitting there like a retard doing nothing. So I said, excuse me for a minute. And I went to my local bar and I started drinking, thinking, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And by the time I realized I had no ideas, I was wasted. <laughs> and I come back to my house and I'm literally stumbling through the door. And the second they see that their subject of their show is just geezed, they light up all the cameras. Oh, they must have been fucking happy, man. Oh, like God, they must have gold. Been Half a second before, like, dude, we're getting canceled. And yeah. All of a sudden, and then, he's, he's, oh. he's like when Urkel showed up on Family Matters. Like, thank God. Here we go. Opens the door. There's a shining aura behind him. I'm not done. My point is to be fascinating. So I go, you guys, you guys, you want to see something really cool? So we go up to my gym, and I take off my shirt, and I think they think I'm just being this total narcissist because I'm in pretty good shape at this point, and I'm just standing there shirtless, and I reach into this fishing tackle box, and I pull out a needle. I mean, they're huge, these needles, because uh, steroids are oil-based, so they release slowly, so there's essentially the consistency of motor oil. So the needle has got to be gigantic. <laughs> so it's not like you're taking a needle, it's you're wounding yourself. So I go, you guys, you guys, you want to see something cool? Watch this. Pow! Right through my shoulder. And I had done it before, but I was showing off, and I hit the bone. Oh, God That's damn. Exactly right. I go, oh, my God. And I let go of the needle, which is now sticking out of my shoulder. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, my God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then finally, I shoot the stuff in, and I pull it out, and there's just blood everywhere. <laughs> Holy because, crap. And it's dripping down my arm. I've got a needle in my hand. And I don't know. I promise you the director is the sweetest man in the world and had my best interests at heart. But somebody had to be going, oh, my God, this is good. Gold, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the fact that they name it Breaking Bonaduce, I don't think they're rooting for your health. Yeah. I, I, I named it Breaking Bonaduce. Oh, my fault, my fault. Yeah, I, it, I, call, I called them up because you get a 10-minute phone call every day. And I called them up and I said, you got to change the title to Breaking Bonaduce. It'll, it'll give people an idea of what they're in for. You know, uh, it's just not fair to have being Bonaduce. Yeah, people think they're going to watch Jesus it, you know, whatever, uh, Peter Brady show. You know, it's Peter Brady with <laughs> yeah. a bike through his head. D Danny, this is obviously <laughs> one, one of these uh, very stereotypical child star things. What? Where did the anger come from? You know what? I'm not that angry of a guy. 
But don't, aren't you in anger management class or something? No, I didn't go. <laughs> didn't go. I didn't fucking need it. <laughs> you only so, got a problem if you show up. <laughs> right. Well, well, Those well, are the well, people. I don't want to give too much away because these guys, this is the very first interview I've ever done where there isn't a VH1 publicist on the other end of the phone. Thank God. Oh, uh, you've done a lot. Of, by the way. You've done a lot of radio. How much do you hate that when all of a sudden you hear the publicist, um, uh, 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 that, that's too far, that's enough, that's no. enough, and they, uh, you know they actually they cut the connection in the middle of the interview because yeah. you asked something a little too crazy? Actually, they say, don't do that to me. I made that real clear. Good. <laughs> I made it real clear. Okay, I know your job. This is my job. You can shake your head at me. Aside from that, that's that. But, Danny, well, the thing is, what is it? Is it getting screwed out of money? Is it the fact that you grow up and all of a sudden the, you're not getting the parts anymore? There just seems to be that what the fuck happens to you guys? Well, you, you, what do you mean? The, the ex child stars on drugs? Yeah, it's always drugs. You no, know, but I don't think it's fair that me, Todd Bridges, and Eddie Munster can bring down an entire industry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. All right, you got a point there. Yeah, it's just the three of us. We're the, we're the most pussy gang in the world. Hey, fucking Blossom's doing fine, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> which, one is, which one is the one that's doing the punk rock thing? Oh, uh, that was uh, courtship, courtship of Eddie's father. Courtship of Eddie's father, which is now he's a really nice guy, by the way. So yeah. I, I'm not making fun. I'm just reporting. He's 107 years old with green hair. Yeah. It's a big <laughs> mistake to think you're a punk rocker. Is, is this like some kind of weird fraternity, and you guys all keep in touch with each other? Yeah, we're best pals. I, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure Urkel's coming over. For yeah, TV. yeah, I'm sure. You and it's weird. Is it true the that Brady's, you the Brady's actually get together? Yeah. That's so strange. Unless there's partridge barbecues going on that I'm just not invited to. <laughs> we hang out. Hey, you know, uh, Barry Williams used to be a pretty good friend of ours, and then he's going through a divorce. Do you know what that's about at all? No, I don't. I, I, all I, right. It's not like, like I said. I, the last time I saw Greg Brady, I was beating his ass. Dude, you laid waste to him. Oh, that's Holy right. I forgot shit. about that. The celebrity fight. Oh, my God. And and the whole lead up to it was just them showing how Danny just can fucking like rip a tiger apart, and and there's Greg Brady like yeah well I'm gonna go in there and give it a, my shot and they're showing like Danny knows martial arts and he's in fucking shape and now we know he's fucking driving motor oil into his shoulders and, and <laughs> I know <laughs> and, and he just goes in there and kicks his. Ass. I didn't. I didn't mean to beat him so badly because at first, because he's much bigger than I am. Yeah. At, at first, these people kept coming into me, and people that would know, like his trainer, came in and said, "Listen, man, you gotta, you gotta take it easy on this guy. You're gonna look like a bully." Yeah. And I thought, well, this is a professional trainer. He's lying. I'm gonna get. He's, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And then somebody else said it, and then somebody else said, "Listen, we really need to get three rounds out of this, if you know what I'm saying." <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, don't don't you worry about it. Carry him a little. Out of it, no problem. So I get out there and I'm dancing around. Well, I, you know, I make Jake Lamada look like a ballerina. I'm the most clumsy <laughs> man. I got one gear and it's forward. <laughs> and so I'm trying to dance around so not to actually fight the guy. And then the audience booed. And once the audience booed, that's it, man. And then I killed him. <laughs> yeah. You'll and then, wait, wait. you know what's funny is I beat him really badly. And I felt bad. And after it was over, I went up to him. I really thanked him because I really wanted to do it, and all my opponents kept backing out. Yeah. They couldn't find an opponent for me, so he agreed to. So I went over and I said, thank you so much for doing this. I really wanted to do it, and I wouldn't have gotten an opportunity unless you agreed, and all this really nice stuff. But his back was all covered in blood, and I don't know if it was the ropes or the canvas, which is real rough, but I mean, he was, you know, uh, the passion of the Christ. <laughs> was, I mean, he was lashed. You tooled him really bad. You know who else got nailed really Really bad was that fucking Arnold Horshack. Horshack yeah. uh, Screech. Well, that was Screech. Just, shouldn't have done that. Oh, I know. It's like they take this old guy and put him in with a young guy. And that was. They took uh, allegedly an old queen <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, with a reasonably a young, healthy man. Yeah. <laughs> he just got the shit beat out of him. <laughs> Did he still have his glasses on? <laughs> what about Paula Jones versus uh, what's your face, the skater? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was another good one. That was on the thing. They, it, it appeared that Greg Brady had a chance. Yeah. yeah. They were wrong. Funny shit, man. Hey, so what's going on with your wife? 
um, hey, uh, the, first of all, the story is bizarre. You really got married uh, after only knowing her a few hours? Yeah, seven hours. Here, here's, I'll give you the quick uh, rundown on this. Met my wife on a blind date. We went out to dinner, and I was drinking heavily, imagine. And I just assumed she was, too. You know, we are having a great big party. We go to my house. I put the moves on her, and she pushes me back and says, you know, I probably should have mentioned this earlier. I'm a Christian, and I'm not, I'm not prepared to do that till I'm married. And I said, hey, you might have mentioned that $90 ago. <laughs> uh, and then I thought, not that unreasonable of a request. I opened the yellow pages. It turns out there's pages of ministers called one of them married 15 years now. Holy shit. You got married just so you could get laid. Now that's a man. <laughs> He's still together. Man. Some guys, uh, you know, that will go a certain level. Like, yeah. I'm going to go 20 pounds overweight tonight. That's a big <laughs> commitment. Not me. I'll get married for it. That's wow. A, I mean, that's you hear a... stories like that, but you don't, you don't hear that they actually stay together, you know? Right. Especially after years, all the bullshit. I was going to say happy as I've ever been, but that's not true. I'll tell you honestly, this... The show, well, I can't say the show because it's my behavior and I've got them to that. But yeah. the behavior I displayed on this show really drove us apart a little bit. That, that got ugly. It's very friendly now, but it's not what it was. <laughs> I've got to kind of work, work my way back into that. Well, the, the weird thing on one of the first shows was how she talked about how she doesn't like having sex. Right. What that's is, a big problem. Yeah, well, that could be a huge yeah. problem. Yeah. Well, not for me. And then, and then yeah. you're training, like, lesbian porn stars in the gym and stuff, and she's really pissed off at you and <laughs> wants you to drop all the female clients that you had. Right. Well, here's my, here was my theory on that, which I think is valid. But when you're trying to do a Ph.D., anything that doesn't sound totally normal like Ozzy and Harriet is crazy. Here's my theory on that, because I had the affair and it was a big drag. But here's my theory, because Gretchen doesn't like sex, right? Uh -huh. Well, it's like saying Gretchen will not cook, yet she won't let me eat anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. you know, it does make sense. It sure. It makes sense. It makes sense. Because we're best friends, too. If she just let me bone, I'd live with this woman for the rest of my life. <laughs> you're, you're speaking the truth, my friend. Thank you. You're speaking for many, many guys out there. Oh, this one, I'm just speaking out loud for many, many guys. And, and the other observation I had was that um, you got a very, very normal uh, daughter there that's uh, going into the business, huh? You know, as a matter of fact, she recently decided it was boring, so she's done. Oh, she is done, because yeah. part of the show is showing her on auditions and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I took her on, I took her on audition, she, uh, and she's, you know, she's probably got 40 grand put away. Jeez, we well, saw her in a stroller. Her, she'll have it paid for. Yep. Yeah, and like I God said, damn. she's up in her room doing blow right now with Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Danny, we met you uh, at the comedy store. Uh, Anthony brought up a point because I, br I brought the show to the, you know, to our attention here, whatever. And we were talking. I'm like, Dan you know that uh, uh, that uh, baby we saw in the stroller when we saw Danny and his wife back at the comedy store. Oh, that's right. This yeah. Is, I, about I don't even know anymore. Like 10, 12 years ago. Like, yeah, over oh, my 10 years 10. ago. Oh, 10. So it was a newborn. It yep. was about 10 years ago then. Yeah, you were walking around with a newborn. And we were doing all those uh, lame interviews down at the comedy store. <laughs> like the big, uh, the big star that showed up, I think, was Greg Brady. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that all, you know, because I do the exact same thing. You'll sit there in the circle of, I uh, know, but in a lot of parts of the country, jocks are the most offensive people in the world. <laughs> yeah. You look around. Like almost some kind of because people can't see you. It's, a, it's an, uh, an excuse not only to get big, fat, and ugly, but for some reason to have gravy on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> when we first started together about ten years ago, Ann and I, we did a lot of those, and we gave up on them, I don't know, six, seven years ago. We couldn't yeah. take it. The, no, the, yeah, the I, fake radio voices and the fake toughness, and it was just awful. Absolutely. And you had to hang out with these guys in the same room. Danny, we lose you? I think we lost Danny. Yeah, his phone was clicking and clacking the oh, whole time. Good, there he is. Oh, wait, Danny, you back? Uh, yeah, I am. I'm back. Whatever. I was making okay, a dumb cool. point anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, you know, I'd do the same thing you guys would do. My radio station would be there, and I'd be in that big U of disc jockeys they'd bring by the celebrities. Yeah. But there'd never be any celebrities except me. <laughs> so they'd take me from my radio station and walk me around to everybody else's radio station. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Like, y you would be up interviewing with other radio stations, yet you were there doing the same thing all the radio guys were doing. And Paul Abdul Records about to run out. i got to get back to my table. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, uh, Danny, you made the uh, gossip column in the Daily News today. Maybe it's all over the country. I don't know. Did you I hear? It is. Uh, you've heard? You want to talk about this or what? Uh, you know what? Is it, is it the legal matter? Yeah, with uh, Jamie White. Yeah, no, I can't. She said some weird shit about you. Yeah. She says weird about me. It's fine. She says some weird stuff about my kid. Oh. Which, I, yeah, I just, it's one of the very few things I don't find amusing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just curious because it's a big story today. Why did you guys, why did you get fired from that job? Because, uh. I swear to God, I don't know. I, because I even went to my boss and I said, listen, man, I'm in trouble. I, I need to go to rehab. I'm, I, I need to know also. Because I've never missed a day of work in my entire life. I've never been sick. I've never been late. I mean, I, I am a together drunk. And, uh. <laughs> So I said, listen, I really feel I need to go to rehab, but I need to know my job will be here when I get back. Mm -hmm. And he said, Danny, not only do we want you back, of course, but you're within your legal rights. The law is on your side. And then I got back from rehab and they fired me. Ah, uh, fucking radios. The, the, That's what I say. Yep. Commercial if radios. Anybody, if anybody's looking for a jock, I'm available. Well, we're looking to give out some golden tickets for uh, XM Satellite Radio, my friend. Right on. Yeah, we're looking to uh, rescue a few more guys from the awful world of commercial radio. Nastiness of commercials and not being able to say hell anymore. So we'll have to talk you know, off. By the way, you guys, this is the first satellite radio show I've ever done, and I'm on hold. And you said, uh, I don't know, and, this, and you just went, ah, fuck it. Now, oh, my God, that's yeah. so cool. It is so cool, man. And we don't have 18-minute commercial blocks, none of that crap. You just talk until you feel like stopping for a while, and then you go take a leak. <laughs> well, that is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Well, when's the, when's the show on? Sundays. Uh, it, it seems to be changing. I believe it is 1030 on Sunday nights. And that's when I'd like you to watch it, because that's when the ratings count. But they show it 18 times a week. Yeah. It's called Breaking Bonaduce on VH1, and watch it whenever you like. Yeah, I don't think you got to worry, man. This one's uh, this one's a winner. Jesus Christ, it's it's it's, it's oh, too much. Have seen us on the View. It was awesome. They hated us. <laughs> <laughs> they invited Gretchen and I on the View, yeah. and like Barbara Walters goes on the attack. But in the beginning of, of the show, she's talking about uh, the president wrote a, a note to Condoleezza Rice saying, "I have to go to the bathroom. Is that possible?" Uh huh. And a photographer got a picture of that note, and they were making fun of it. And Barbara Walters says, that's how I got where I am. I never have to pee. I can outweigh anybody, and blah, 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 blah. So I go out on stage, <laughs> and one time she says, being really mean to me, and I go, are you kidding? You're going to judge my show when you just spent four minutes on the fact that Barbara Walters doesn't have to pee? <laughs> And wow. Then, 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 and this, this definitely got cut out. I thought it was cool. Star Jones goes, I am not even willing to talk about this. And I said, try keeping your mouth shut next to a buffet. Bravo. Oh, oh no. We, we hate her. We I hate we hate Star you know Jones. It's, you know what's great? You get Danny on, on interview shows like that, and people will try to get you. They'll try to, like, bring stuff up. But Danny won't deny it. Right. It's well, not like, no, well, what I meant was this, with, uh, what you saw was it. It's just, no, yeah, that shit happened. Next. You know, so I'll give you the perfect example of that. So, Danny, I read you picked up a transvestite hooker. What really happened? Well, I picked up a hooker and it turned out to be a guy, and I got all pissed off. <laughs> you know, so it's not like I'm not going to tell him. I'm, I'm pretty hard to hurt at this yeah. point in the career. That story got blown out of proportion. I wasn't even near a hooker. It was, no, yeah, hooker. No, reached down, no, no. got a handful of knob, and decided to punch him in the fucking face. <laughs> he, had a, he had a wiener, and he wasn't supposed to. He, he demanded, he goes, you owe me 40 bucks because you took me off my corner. I go, buddy, get out of the car. It's just a misunderstanding. And he said, no, you owe me 40 bucks. You took me off my corner. I said, I'm going to give you one more chance to get out of this car. <laughs> so I go over to his side of the door, and I pull him out of the car. And he's big. And then I realized this is a large man in fishnets and pumps who's selling his ass. This could be really dangerous. So I beat the bejesus out of this guy. And then, you'll love this part, because this is singular to me. I've heard every story that you can imagine, that, and this pops it all for me. So I see the cops, and they're coming. And I think, I can explain this. <laughs> and he lost. Right? He lost bad, but he just lost. And then I thought, mm, Danny Pudridge beats transvestite. <laughs> yeah, that's... I, I, I gotta go. So I jump in my car and I run. And I get to listen to the high-speed chase I'm in on the car stereo of the car I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> that was something. Oh, my God. <laughs>
<laughs> That's great, man. That was a big night out. <laughs> you you are the real deal, Danny. Well, thank you. <laughs> what do we get to watch you do on TV in uh, future episodes? Uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? To be honest, I swear to God, I, and I'm not being coy here. There are huge gaps of what I remember. <laughs> wow. So he's yeah. got to watch the show just to know what he did. I'm not watching the show. No. No. Why? Why is that? Because <laughs> from what I've heard, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> People are suing me. And are you are you trying to say you're embarrassed by uh, how you look on TV? Or only or? only because when I'm all lit up and ready, like my own crew, I love this shot. I love this shot. And I know it made it. At one point, my own crew calls the police on me. <laughs> I'm I, I forget what happens. My wife's at the W Hotel having this party. Somebody says something I don't like. I say to the limousine driver, "Take me to the W Hotel right now." And the director says, "No." And I said, hey, the name of the show is Breaking while well, that time being Bonaducci. That makes it my show. That makes this my limousine. Take me to the W Hotel right now. And the guy goes, no. So I said, really? And I just opened the door and jumped at about 25. So they just me rolling down the street. And I get up and I stop a car. Like, I'm the police. I just stop this car. And the guy goes, hey, you did Bonaducci. <laughs> And I said, yeah, will you take me to the W Hotel? And he said, sure, hop in. So I hop in, I drive off, and they cut to this producer, and he's on the phone to the W Hotel, and he's saying, listen, uh, Dan Bonaducci is on his way down there, and somebody is going to get hurt. You should call the police right now. That's my own crew. Holy That's a shit. shit. How, how are you going to do control. it? How are you going to get a second season of this show, by the way? I beat the hell out of me. Yeah, it's a it's a type of show I don't see how you could possibly do a second season. Well, you know, uh, things have occurred to me. Because we're, we're cause, cause it's, you know, it, it is, and here's what I think might be interesting. I'm not, I'm not, you know, because I really do need to work again. These shows don't pay very much. I need to go back to radio soon. Right. But um, I don't live like regular people ever. The fact that I was drunk makes me this wild drunk. The fact that I do a great deal of those things after giving it careful consideration and think, hey, let's play shit, bitch. I think that's <laughs> even more interesting. Thinking it out, knowing the ramifications, and playing anyway, I think is just as interesting. Yeah. Wow. And I, I was so mad at VH1 about one thing. They go to pull the plug. They come up to me and they go, hey, uh, listen, Danny, uh, we're going to pull the plug on the show. And I said, why? And they said, we believe that you're dying. And I said, perfect. Why would you not want to roll on that? The, <laughs> the death of a B-mister? That would be huge. Why would you not want to shoot till I die? And they kind of all looked around like, boy, he's got a good point. But then they put me in rehab anyway. That's the ultimate goal of reality TV. It I really is, and it has been. Yep. Uh, it's been leading slowly, toward that. Surely. Yeah, that's the end of that genre. It's been leading there the whole time. We almost right. got there with Pedro in uh, Real World San Francisco. Yeah. Watched him die on TV for 12 weeks or whatever it was. Just about, but someone completely self-destructive. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah that was nasty. Yeah, we're never going to be on TV, Danny. We uh, we pitched a show to A&E <laughs> <laughs> the other day. It wasn't our it wasn't our idea, and we were it wasn't your finest moment. It was complete. We were no. completely embarrassed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Anthony pitched show A and E. A and E, yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> Do we have a great agent or what? <laughs> this is a good show. It, we basically pitched uh, MythBusters meets Jackass. Oh yeah, A and E would love that. Yeah, exactly. yeah. They'll eat that up. They it's looked perfect. at us like we had like uh, you know two heads. The famous. I got uh, the weirdest thing happening there. I can't can't believe it. I thought by now, you know, because you know radio, no matter how crazy I got, the, sh the show's a huge success. I thought my phone would be ringing off the hook with radio offers. No, no, no uh, regular radio, they're, they're a bunch petrified. of pussies now. Everyone's petrified now. You, right. re you realize you can't even say fart on regular radio? Is that, is that over now? Yeah. And, and you, you know how, uh, Danny knows the game, you know how you would get away with shit and talk uh, double entendre and oh, talk sure. around things? Now they're finding uh, DJs because they know what uh, we were trying to yeah, say. Yeah, it says, well, Whoa. yeah, they say, well, we know what you meant. And everyone knew what you meant, so we're going to find you. Even though you never said wow. that the penis went into the vagina. Yeah. God, I, I never knew that. I, didn't, I did not know that. Business sucks that's ass. outrageous. Dude, that, yeah. they're helping us out with the satellite radio. Everyone's uh, yep. you're coming aboard in droves at this point. So. Well, can I, good. I, I appreciate to know where a good avenue is. But can I ask you a real-life question that maybe you can help me out with? Yeah, sure. 
I got lunch today with a really huge producer guy for TV and yeah. two movies, right? He's got, um, well, he's just a big shot. He's a real big shot. He's not some Hollywood guy that says, I've got a deal. He's a real big shot. He's meeting with me because he's watched the show and he thinks, Danny Bonaducci is one of the scariest people on <laughs> earth. I really want to meet him. I've got some projects. What do I wear? Do I show up looking normal, or do I show up for lunch looking freaky? Look scary. Look scary. If he wants, yeah. if if he's saying Danny Bonaduce is one of the scariest people, and I want to capitalize on that, you need like a fucking wife beater shirt. Danny. Yeah. Here's the deal. You, yeah. you, you go to the meeting with a butcher knife, right? <laughs> that occurred to me. Hold on. You got a film crew, right? <laughs> right in front of them. You you ch you lop off one of your fingers. You got ten. You don't need them all. I'm and they could you. probably sew it right back on. Yeah, and maybe they could sew it back on. You take like just take one knuckle out, man, right in front of them. <laughs> like in Sharky's machine. I'm so the crew, the show is wrapped. So I, I won't have a film crew, but if you want a real life indication as to uh, God, I want to say how crazy I am because it seems normal and right to me. Yeah. Um, there is. I was very sad that I had uh, this affair. I love my wife, and I did not mean to have an affair, right? Yeah. And there, I, I'm a big fan of the Japanese culture. I'm a third degree black belt. I speak Japanese. And the, in the Yakuza, which is the Japanese, Japanese organized crime, there is a way, no matter what you have done, that you can apologize once. And it's to cut off the top knuckle of your little finger and present it into a, in a box to the person you've offended. Do it. Mm. So I looked at my wife, and I said, so, who I thought didn't even know about this, and I said, listen, honey, I am going to apologize to you in a way that you have to accept. And she usually rolls her eyes, and she goes, you know, if you cut off your finger, it won't mean anything to me. Everybody knows you can cut off your finger. Try behaving. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, man. <laughs> she knows yep. you. The yes, she does. Right. I mean, 30 seconds an hour, that was a bitch, but a lifetime of behaving? Jesus. <laughs> Danny, we got we to gotta talk radio with you. How, how could Eric Logan get a hold of you? Call me at home. Uh, oh, we got your numbers? All right, good. Cause, I'm uh, assuming you do, yeah. Yeah, call, man. Because we're, uh, we do have some spots left, and, uh, man, you're very interesting. We've, uh, we've been following you for years, and we, we bump heads every once in a while with you. So. And you've always been very kind to me, and I appreciate that. And we, I appreciate this time today. I really, you know, the show's important to me. A very obscure thing. We saw you walking out of a hamburger joint on, uh, what was it, Anthony, uh, 6th Avenue. Remember that horrible, horrible burger joint, and we ended up killing him on the air? Oh, yeah. Oh. And you walked out of it. Bar. A place called the Oyster Bar. There's a couple different Oyster Bars in New York. Yeah, I know it. I know it. All right, but the one on I think it was like 56 or 50. Fifth Street. Yeah, no, no, I only went to the one. I knew exactly yeah. what you were talking about. And you were walking out of there as we were walking in. We just kind of said hey to each other. No, no big deal. We didn't really talk. And we ended up going in there and having the worst hamburger <laughs> ever. Thank God I had already enough to I'd have gotten blamed. And you became part of the story <laughs> yeah. that day because we're like, Jesus, you know, we, he's walking out of the place. It had to be good. <laughs> he's a celebrity. It's got to be good, right? Got some cash left. Yeah. yeah. It was just a, whatever. It's just a, a dumb, obscure it's thing. But. Is walking out. This place must suck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Danny. It's always a pleasure. Hey, thanks for the time, you guys. I sincerely appreciate it. Hey, thank you, man. Don't kill yourself, all right? Well, not until the second season. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Bonaduce, thanks, Danny. Bye, guys. All right, there he goes. That rock. Absolutely.